Lord Wingrace versus Narset Enlightened Master. Uh, hmm. Well, Dread Arbor, Arcane Signet, Golgari Signet, yeah. Plus land drops we can keep there. We're on the play. So let's shock that in. And we'll go for our turn one ramp spell with Green Sun Zenith. Haha. <laughs> And a mental misstep from our opponent, fair enough. Gets it out of the way. Not too worried about getting down an extra land on turn one. I'd rather it countered that than a soul ring. That also tells us that we're up against a more competitive player. Let's go wasteland into the Golgari Signet. I'd rather that got blown up than an Arcane Signet. Fingers crossed for a land so that we can go for a turn four Planeswalker. And speaking of Sol Ring, there comes one from our opponent. We get into a land though. Yeah, I think it's just a case of trying to race our opponent, isn't it? Let's go like that. We could keep our fingers crossed for a land again. And then wasteland them. Yeah, see what we want to do. Depends entirely on if they hit a land here or not. And which land they hit. That will dictate what we wasteland. <laughs> Hall of the Bandit Lords, so a Narset with haste, that's not good. And Pithing Needle, most likely names Wasteland, so let's go. Yeah, let's get rid of that. I'd like to mess about with our opponent's colours, but we'll have them name something else with Pithing Needle. They may just name our commander. They do, they go for our Lord Wingrace. There's a Torment of Hellfire for us. Let's just get down Mina and Den. Have no extra lands to play, unfortunately. But that's a pretty good blocker for Narset, at least. They'll probably lose Narset if they go into that. And there's a Force of Will. Don't mind them countering that, either. There's still a couple of mana away from, well... <laughs> only one mana away from their commander now. Going straight in for a City of Brass. And into a Chandra, this is quite the hand our opponent's got. They've got two free counter spells, a haste enabler, all the colours they need, fast mana, a way of turning off our commander. Yeah, there's. They've done really well here, but we've just drawn into Ramunap. So we can screw up their colours. Yeah, I think we just have to get rid of City of Brass, force them to tick down the Chandra, and that'll give us a little bit of time to go for Lord Wingrace. It's the only thing we can do this turn anyway, so we might as well cast the Ramin out. Any more free counter magic? Pact of Negation, maybe? No, they do not have that, seemingly. So we go Wasteland, and we really are just forcing our opponent to answer the Ramin app at this point. <laughs> but of course they Either had a land already, or they just ripped into one off the top. One more, and they'll be able to get their commander down. Oh, of course, they can have mana with this, can't they? Hmm. Well, it doesn't come down with haste, at least. Uh, yeah, we just haven't drawn into the lands, have we? Let's go wasteland again. And we'll play the Gitrog monster, so that at least our opponent has to swing into a Death Toucher. Yeah, completely forgot about the fact that our opponent can add mana with Chandra. And they did have a Pact of Negation. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, I hate playing against Narset anyway, because... <laughs> because it's such a pain to play against and all this free... Free um, spells all over the place. But the fact that they've had such a great hand and drawn such good cards... Yeah, anyway, it happens. That's actually really funny that... We predicted Pact of Negation there. So, uh, not going in with the Ramming app. They may well just go for Chandra's Limit Break at this point. They get an emblem whenever you cast a spell. And it's 5 damage, 20 target. Does Narset cast? Yeah, you may cast non-creature cards. We know they've got plenty of counter magic, so... They may well just rip into a bunch of counters with Narset. 
Got one card left in hand now, and it was a land. They've ripped a lot of those off the top, unlike us. And now going in for the damage. Going to put a stop on the upkeep for the Vampiric Tutor. Now let's see what they got into. Is it the Exile Zone? There's a Dak Fade and a Flusterstorm. Oh, and a Braid, a Khan Liberated. Wow. Yeah, some games you are just not destined to win, and this is one of them. So I think it's safe to say that we've lost this one, and I think it's safe to scoop as well. Let's just see what our opponent goes for with Khan out of Morbid Curiosity. They go after our Coloured Mana, and there we go, we are left with only two lands in play. And they didn't cast the Dak Faden. why didn't they go for that? Or is that exiled? Oh, this must be exiled with Force of Will. And then Flusterstorm, I don't know why he's exiled, but anyway, they didn't get exiled with the Narset. So that's why our opponent didn't go for that. Anyway, we have certainly lost this one. So it's a good game to our opponent. And hopefully we have better luck in the next one. I think this game was fast enough that we can get another game in. Alright, let's try again and hope that we don't run up against a god hand. We're up against a control player again. Or what I imagine is a control deck. Kaikar wins Fury. And we have... Uh, we can go for a green source there. And drop exploration and hope for another land. Uh, Oracle of Muldaya gets us closer. Yeah, I really don't want to... Go after green mana if we're going to need Diabolic Tutor or Demonic Tutor to get us into a land. Yeah, I'm going to just keep my fingers crossed and go for an exploration here. It means a turn two Wood Elves. And then a Talisman of Conviction for our opponent. So they've gotten all of their colours now. We do rip into a land off the top. That's excellent. So we can now go in for the Wood Elves. We've got Black Mana now as well. Go for a Green Black here. And that means that we can at least go for either the Oracle of Muldaya or the Song of the Dryads next turn. May even be able to get into our Commander. Song of the Dryads onto Kaikar. I don't mind one bit. Although, whenever I go for Kaikar, I like to leave Counter Magic back up for things like that. We get into another forest. Does our opponent have Counter Magic? We'll soon find out. I'd rather it was out of their hand, if they've got it. Oh, and of course, it's a Mana Drain. It's always Mana Drain. Alright. Thought they might have Counter Magic, but I was hoping it wasn't Mana Drain. Swinging at our opponent for one. They get five mana to play with here. We'll see how much of it they can use. Okay, getting into a Boros Signet. That just means that they can hold up blue mana, I think. Well, they're not holding up two blue mana at least, but that's not to say that they are not holding up counter magic. Okay, going straight in for a Brainstorm. They're in white, so they can deal with Song of the Dryads. And they drop an Ancient Tomb, doing a nice job of ramping, but they are empty in their hand. And, oh, a Wheel of Fortune with Song of the Dryads and a Tutor in hand. And it refills their hand as well. You really do get punished for not running blue in Commander sometimes. Pretty much the only thing we could do against that is Counter Magic. It's the reason that you see so many blue decks in 1v1. 1v1's a more competitive format, and like I said, you do get quite punished sometimes for not running blue. It's not to say that Lord Wingrace can't keep up, though. Uh, so what do we want here? I think Obnixilis sounds pretty good. Although, do we want to go for the Mana Doubler while our opponent is shields down? I mean, they've got two mana held up. They could still counter us. Uh... Yeah, I think in order to try and keep up, we have to go for Mana Reflection here, so let's drop Sol Ring. Our opponent is holding priority. Ah, uh, yeah, we'll just try it. It's so like I always say, 
Even if our opponent has counter magic, we need to get it out of their hand. <laughs> and of course they've got more counters. This is seemingly exactly the same way that I've built Kaikar. Spell Slinger, wheels, counter all of your opponent's stuff and be generally obnoxious. So that gets rid of another counter spell. We will drop the Command Tower because Obnixilis likes to see landfall and it'll see two lands off of a Bloodstained Mire. We're not out of it just yet. Our opponent may well burn all the cards in their hand. They're going for something else still. Okay, it's a scroll rack, so they don't like at least some of the cards in hand. But as long as they can't shuffle, all they're doing is extending their hand size in a way. Say they go five cards on top and five cards from the top into their hand. That's ten cards that they're just cycling through over and over again. If they can keep track of what's on top, they might be able to grab counter spells and things, but I dare say our opponent has counters in hand and they'll just keep them in hand if they want to use them, as opposed to putting them on top with scroll rack. We draw two with the Arcane Denial. Miri's Guile could have done with that instead of the Coffers, could have played it last turn. Already, potentially, getting rid of a card off the top with Temple of Enlightenment. They can scry one to the bottom. Now a Thought Vessel for an unlimited hand size and more mana. I think we have to try a Bane of Progress, to be honest. I don't like losing Sol Ring or Exploration, but... Don't really see what else we can do. Now a Narset, part of the Veil, so they do have Wheel Mana held up. And they're going for something. It is a peak. They want to see if it's safe to go for whatever they're going for. But they might as well cast that because they get to draw a card anyway. Then going for the minus on Narset, reveal the top four and put a non-creature on land into hand. They've caught Cyclonic Rift. Yeah, it's not our day against control players, is it? Put that over there so that we don't forget about it. Okay, a regrowth. I think we're just going way too slow here compared to our opponent. Can we go Obnixilis and Bane of Progress? If we go one, two... 3, 4, 5 into Obnixilis, play a couple of lands, we'll be on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so no, Cabal Coffers, can we make that add any mana? We'll have 5 lands held up, we'll have 1, 2, 3, 4 swamps in play, so we tap down 2 mana, and a Cabal Coffers to get four, and then five, six. I think we can. Oh no, we can't play Cabal Coffers as well, can we? We don't have enough land drops. Hmm. All right, if we go like that, we can reanimate some lands, can't we? So let's play a land, play a land. We'll sack both of these. And we'll try and get as many swamps into play as possible. That one can be a bayou. That one can be a badlands. Just trying to set us up for next turn here. Then we try Lord Wingrace. Oh, of course, we've already cast it this game, haven't we? I thought we hadn't cast it yet. Okay. This is what happens when you just sit and watch your opponent play. I've obviously switched off a little bit. In that case, we'll just go Bane of Progress. Take our opponent down a hell of a lot of mana. Then we'll go Painful Truths and... Let's go Miri's Guile as well. Oh, we have to put different colours in. I told you I'd switched off. The whole point in Painful Truths is that this is a three colour deck. We'll lose three, and draw three. Oh, and... <laughs> Narset. Alright, so we just pay three 
to lose three life. Oh, God. Could have gone for regrowth onto the mana thing. We got the Bane of Progress through at least, but I'm just proving here that I've switched off a little bit against the control player. They've only got four pieces of coloured mana, which might bottleneck them nicely. Although, yeah, that's two pieces of coloured mana really, isn't it? So five. We've got Cabal Coffers, which we can gain mana with. We can't draw extra cards. It's an Afara from our opponent, and our opponent can certainly draw extra cards. I think relying on Obnixilis is the thing. Going for another minus on Narset, and they get into a Mystical Tutor. <laughs> yeah, getting into Cyclonic Rift, Mystical Tutor. Uh, a bunch of Mana Rocks, Counter Magic, Wheels. I mean, the fact that I played that last turn very poorly didn't exactly help, but... Okay, not going in with the Spirits, curiously. They obviously want the mana from that. I'm hoping our opponent isn't just toying around. Although it would be really good if we could punish them for doing that. Okay, just passing the turn with mana held up. We'll have a look at the top three and see if we like anything. An Urborg with Cabal Coffers would be good, but it would keep our opponent from putting life into Ancient Tomb. Okay, Eternal Witness, Amulet of Vigor... I think just Eternal Witness there. Let's go Amulet of Vigor, Grill Signet, and the E-Witness. Then we'll see if we can stick Obnixilis. Five cards in our opponent's hand. They do allow us to have it. We'll go Cabal Coffers. Our opponent's going to lose three. We could have had them lose a hell of a lot of life last turn. Had I have remembered about... Lord Wingrace, I might have done things differently. In fact, I probably would have done. I probably would have gone for the Obnixilis play before dropping those lands. Could have piled a lot of damage onto our opponent. Uh, then if we tap three lands, we get four black, which is a regrowth into a Demonic Tutor. Or we can just try E-Witness here. Yeah, we'll just go for Eternal Witness. It costs more, and it's a body. That goes through. I'm not too sure if our opponent has counters or not. I think just going for the Demonic Tutor is the best thing, even though I don't really know what we want. And now that Obnixilis is in play, I think we're best trying to get down our commander next turn. Swing in at our opponent's head with the Bane of Progress. They probably just jump block. Our opponent does have a Rift in hand, don't forget. So even if we manage to survive, our opponent's going to be able to drag the game out for quite a while. I think we bounce back from a Rift better than they would from one, though. Now it's Mystical Tutor. They know we have a Tutor in hand, so they may want to go for another one of their wheels, especially if they don't like the cards in hand. But... That will get rid of Cyclonic Rift if they went for something like a Time Twister. It is a Time Spiral they went for. So what they might do is go for Cyclonic Rift at the end of our turn. Bounce all our stuff back into hand and then on their turn, shuffle it all away with Time Spiral. And there is a Path to Exile onto the Obnixilis. So I don't think we were ever going to win this had I of played any better. Uh, yeah, so they've got 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 for the Cyclonic Rift. Then they can get rid of our hand with a Time Spiral, and we won't draw any cards thanks to our dear friend Narset over here. Sacrificing Spirits for Mana now. How much can they make off that? 4, 5, 6, 7. And then they've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, so they're probably just going for the Time Spiral now. So that bounces that stuff back into our hand. Pretty much the only thing we were making use of is the Miri's Guile anyway. Then they've got 5 mana, Sacrifice a Spirit, and they go for the Time Spiral. Fun times to be had with one-sided wheels. And we drew into a Mana Crypt. 
which isn't the greatest. Our Lord Wingrace isn't anywhere near as good because we can't fetch anything out of the graveyard. And we can't discard a land and draw two, thanks to Narset. So I'll give it another turn or two. But I really don't see what we can do here. Now is there an orb to gain life? A preordained scry two and draw. And there is that peak again. Okay, and now getting in for commander damage by the looks of it. I'm assuming that's what this is. Devouring Rage, they sacrificed a bunch of spirits. And that jumps up to a 27-3. And that's lethal commander damage, so thankfully we didn't have to sit around for too much longer to wait for our opponent to eventually grind out a win. And there we are, another good game to another control player. Yeah, I don't think we were ever winning that one, to be honest. Uh, pretty embarrassing to go for that Painful Truths, even though we knew Narset was in play. Um, as you can see, our opponent's going on for five minutes behind on the clock. Um, but it's fair enough from our opponent, they, uh, they had to think about what they were doing, so there's no ill will there. It's just that if I have to watch my opponent play a more solitaire control game, and I have to wait for them to actually take their turns, um, yeah, obviously my brain just kind of switched off a bit as I've already been through. But I don't feel too bad about making those obvious mistakes because I think we were always going to lose anyway. I don't think us getting into the Obnixilis instead of the Painful Truths or the Bane of Progress or anything like that, I don't think any of it would have made a blind bit of difference because either way, our opponent was going to set up a one-sided wheel and discard all our stuff. So there was never anything we were going to do, I don't think. Lord Wingrace versus Niv Mizzet Reborn. Uh, are we going to get into fast enough mana? Yeah, I don't think so. I think that is too slow compared to all the ramp that Niv Mizzet probably has in hand. That's a hell of a hand, isn't it? We're pretty safe to get rid of life from the loam there. We'll have one, two, three, four. Five, six. Uh, yeah, maybe get rid of Field of the Dead, actually. We'll keep that. Get rid of the Field of the Dead. Then we can cast Life from the Loam and try and get into another green source. Going to drop a mountain, just in case our opponent goes for a Wasteland on turn one. I doubt they will in a five-colour deck, but it's worth playing around, I think. And it's an exploration from our opponent, so they are... Getting into a little bit of fast mana, which is what I was worried about. And there's a tiger, so do we need to even bother with Life from the Loam? I'll play it anyway, just in case we want to make use of it. But we're going in for a turn 3 win, Grace, currently. I suppose we should dredge it next turn if we're going in for Lord Wing Grace. Because then we can reanimate some lands when he comes out. Okay, yep, yeah, definitely. Fast mana. Been coming across some powerful opponents tonight. So that is now three colours and four colours in Commander's Sphere. Uh, yes, we will dredge with Life from the Loam. Get into <laughs> no lands, of course. Glacial Chasm doesn't count. Uh, let's go for... Yeah, we'll go for Lord Wingrace. And I think we'll discard that Ancient Tomb. Get into another land, that's good. So now we've got two lands to reanimate. We've got a land to play next turn into prime time. And we've actually got lands to grab back with life from the loam as well. Looks like our opponent's commander's coming down as well. They get ten cards exiled. How many of those can they keep? Uh, there's one, two, three, four and five. I think. So they get rid of that, 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 and that. We know that they've got those in hand. Uh, so let's go for... Yeah, we have to go in for the Primeval Titan here. Shocking, an overgrown tomb. Just because I want the additional black mana. 
Then we'll say yes to prime time, and because our opponent's gotten off to such a fast start, why don't we just assemble a combo immediately? Uh, where are we? Oh, I must have taken it out because it's in another Lands Matter deck and I've got quite a few of them. What I would have gone for here is Thespian Stage into the uh, Marit Lage token, but we don't have that combo in here. Uh, so, in that case, how many land names do we have? We'll trigger Field of the Dead next turn. So let's go Field of the Dead. And we'll grab a Maze of Ith as well. Yeah, let's grab Maze of Ith. And then Glacial Chasm. It prevents damage that will be dealt to you, not your Planeswalkers. So I'm going to try and drive my opponent's niv Mizzet into our, um, our Planeswalker here. And I'm going to go for a fresh card with Life from the Loam. Okay, get into Demonic Tutor. I'm glad I didn't mill that. So let's just pass over. Let's see what our opponent's got for us. We could really mess up our opponent with a Bane of Progress, getting rid of their mana and their exploration. They're going to have Wooburg if they carry on hitting lands though, but it will set them down a couple of mana. Going for D-Spark onto our commander, so just straight up using D-Spark and deciding not to swing in with Niv-Mizzet. Then going for the Wrecking Ball onto the Primeval Titan. That is, destroy a creature or land. Then swinging in at us with their commander. We've got a Maze of Ith now. Uh, let's go Life from the Loam. And I think Crucible of Worlds is going to be pretty good. If we go for Glacial Chasm, we can sack it and play it every turn. So let's go Life from the Loam. Grabbing all three lands out of the bin. Then we'll go Demonic Tutor for the Crucible of Worlds. And we don't need to worry about Glacial Chasm just yet because we've got Maze of Ith. So let's just go like that. Drop the Ancient Tomb. We'll get a trigger on the Field of the Dead now. And then we can go in for three visits. Alright, so hopefully we can keep our opponent at bay here. It's actually better if we keep niv Mizzet out of play, because if they can recast that, it's a lot of card advantage for them. <laughs> but they've got a Primeval Titan of their own. So that solves their mana issues, even if we go for a Bane of Progress. Now niv Mizzet coming in at us, we obviously maze that. Remove it from combat and untap it. And then let's go for more Life from the Loams. Uh, we mill no lands, of course. Actually get rid of Oracle, Amiri's Guile, oh, and Nissa Vital Force. It doesn't feel good getting rid of that. Let's go in for our commander again. We can discard the Glacial Chasm. Alright, and there's a Splendid Reclamation. Let's go for playing the land. Get more Field of the Dead triggers, and Glacial Chasm means that we have to sacrifice a land. Let's just get rid of the Ancient Tomb. We can play it again next turn, thanks to Crucible. And then, I think, it's Cultivate. We'll grab one of each of a Forest and a Swamp. Forest goes into play tapped, triggering the field again. And now we've got enough to block on the Primeval Titan if they want to swing in there, so they're in a predicament here. They're facing down a Lord Wingrace Limit Break, if they're not careful. Because we can maze the niv Mizzet away, and we can block on the Primeval Titan. And they can't deal any damage to us thanks to the Glacial Chasm. Okay, Demonic Tutor, they might want to exile our graveyard. We've still got life from the loam in hand. So we're not necessarily too worried about that. Now it is a Fractured Identity. Exile the target non-land permanent. Each player other than its controller creates a token copy of it. Alright, so they get... I don't know if that fizzles because the Lord Wingrace doesn't get exiled. Anyway, 
We'll soon find out. Yep, yeah, they do still get a token copy of that. They go for grabbing back a Marsh Flats, minusing down the Lord Wingrace and cracking that fetch immediately. Okay, and then coming in with the Primeval Titan, I will trade them here. We can trade on the Zombies and still get rid of their Lord Wingrace, assuming that they don't have removal. If they want to use that on a token, then it's not the worst thing, although they have to tap that out for the Gateway Plaza. First thing, uh, we could just... Yeah, we can just take the hit from Nib Mizzet, can't we? So we don't need to untap that and give them a blocker. Let's just gang up on the prime time. We do not take a hit for six from Nib Mizzet, thanks to that Glacial Chasm. Now we need to decide if we want to take two life from this or not. We could just sacrifice it and replay it with Crucible, but we go down a land then. Although we do have Splendid Reclamation in hand. I am just going to pay the two life this one time. And then I'll probably sacrifice it next turn. Crop Rotation is Vesuva onto Field of the Dead. Let's go after that Lord Wingrace first. Oh no! <laughs> Forgot all about the Cart Attack Clause. So perhaps should have sacrificed the Glacial Chasm if we want rid of Lord Wingrace. Ugh. I haven't played this deck in a while, and you've seen the ramifications of that here. How much is Lord Wingrace to get back out again? Uh, that is nine. We've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's go for an Ancient Tomb. Then we will discard the Swamp and draw Nature's Law. Uh, yeah, we can go for Nature's Law and then hold up the crop rotation. If they swing in at Lord Wingrace with their Niv Mizzet, I'm just going to take it. And then definitely going to remember to sacrifice the Glacial Chasm. They go for a plus on Lord Wingrace because that's all they can do. And they discard that that they took at the beginning of the game. So we only know of Ojitai's Command. And Fevered Visions. There's Kasali Pride Mage. Uh, so that can get rid of Crucible of Worlds. Luckily we've still got life from the loam. Multiple land drops a turn is what we need really. I mean we can rely on Splendid Reclamation as well. And there is the Ojitai's Command. They've still got four cards in hand. One of which we know about. Followed by a Chromatic Lantern. And there is the Fevered Visions, so we can finally get rid of the Exile Zone. Or the Reveal Zone, that was, wasn't it? And then Fevered Visions at the beginning of each player's end step. If that player is your opponent and has four or more cards in hand, it's two damage to that player. We definitely need to keep an eye on that. Uh, let's go for getting rid... Might as well sacrifice the Glacial Chasm, because we're going to sacrifice it anyway. And we'll grab Vesuva. Vesuva comes in as Field of the Dead. So we get some more zombie tokens. And we get into a Blood Crypt, which I think I will discard immediately. Okay, get into more mana. There's Mina and Den for multiple land drops a turn, so let's play the Mina and Den. Play a couple of fetches now. Okay, well it appears as though our opponent's just going AFK. It's been two or three minutes now. And uh, yeah, be a real shame to end this game on that. But I've just played against some control players and I dare say you know the outcome of those games by now. Either I've shown you those games in a video already or I've decided to tack this on to the end of another one and give you a triple whammy Lord Wingrace video. It'd be a real shame if my opponent were to go AFK to this because in all honesty I don't really know how we're going to win from here. We just need to drag the game out long enough to probably go wide on our opponent with zombies. Other than that I don't really see what we can do. We could regurgitate the fetches with Life from the Loam and our commander. Uh, are we on the limit break next turn? No, we're a couple of turns off the limit break. 
destroy six non-land permanents, get a bunch of cats. I mean, we just aim for one, two, three, four, five, six, assuming Lord Wingrace is still in play. I certainly wouldn't get rid of my opponent's niv Mizzet. And then we've got a bunch of cats. Our opponent has a forest. And there we go. They either go down to inactivity or they decided to scoop. They do get forest walk, don't they? Yeah, so they'd be taking 12 damage a turn from the forest walking cats. And it looks like they can't do anything about the Lord Wingrace limit break. Thanks to our Maze of Ith play earlier on. They can't get through with their commander. So, like I said, it's a shame to end it like that, but these things happen. And apparently our opponent didn't have anything in hand to deal with what we had going on. So hopefully you all enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you want to help out the channel. And you can hit subscribe as well to keep up to date with all the latest videos. I'm Travel Kai on the EDH channel. Thank you for watching.